get in here, but this is a this is a cow's udder that's that's opened up, and this is what what it really looks like, and it's it's pretty simple. We always think about the end of the the, the part of the cow that we pay attention to is the teat, and then you know that there's this the the street canal, and then it, when you open it up, you can see this little white thing in here, and that has the fancy name of the Rosetta Furstenberg. But that's this is the this is where the um, the what keeps the milk in and where the milk goes out. And yet, when you when you have the misfortune of violating a teat with a, anything like a teat a tool to open the teat, you have to penetrate through that through that little white tube that looks like it's about a quarter of an inch long, and and damage that so that you get increased milk flow. That's the point. Of, that's the point of opening a teat, so that the teat has has a little sinus called a teat sinus. And then you can see you can, the one the easiest way to think about about the udder is like it's a that it's a, a bunch of grapes turned upside down and the stems at the bottom. So the the stem, the thicker end, is this is called the gland sinus, and that's where milk collects as it's produced. And it's and, and then there's a series of ducts that keep getting smaller until you get up into this parenchyma where the where the milk is secreted. And are, there are little like small grape clusters up in here that are actually the action parts of the of the milk production. And when when you give a, when you give a cow an injection of oxytocin or all the other things that stimulate a cow to release endogenous oxytocin, there's little cells around little muscle cells that are around these glands that stimulate that contract and, and are involved with milk letdown. So um, we can gather around here and look at that if you want to. The other, there's two other interesting things about this udder. One, one is that this is the fore udder, and this, this cow had one of these big um, nasty ulcers that are at the fore udder. And this one's pretty well washed off because I hosed all these babies off, but you can imagine, you can see the thing, the size of this, this lesion, it's almost the size of my hand. If you had a lesion like that somewhere on your body, you'd probably get skin grafts. So it's not hard to imagine. This thing gets dirty all the time. It's, it's folded up. It stays moist. So it's not hard to imagine that it's really hard to get those things um, healed up. You guys know that from personal experience. But it's, it's pretty cool to see this because it's an impressive lesion. This, this teat is tied off because, because this is an abscess. It's full of pus. And there's a, yeah, that one's out of that one, though. So I'm not going to open this till at the end because it's probably going to stink the joint up. But if I find the right pocket, See this. This is this is even beyond what um, Dr. Polson was talking about about severe mastitis. The, there's a there's a set of certain organisms cause this kind of an inflammatory response. And this this quarter shot. There's nothing you're going to do to fix that. But it's just a, one big abscess. This this is a this is a kind of a cool udder. This is the this is the front part of the udder, and this is the the back part. They, so you, I go, this is there are two big lymph nodes on the back of the cow, and. Um, this one is this one is in size, so you can see it. In most most cases, you know, when you go to the doctor and you get they feel your lymph nodes to be sure, see if you have any kind of inflammatory process. We don't have to do that with a cow. We have a we have a, a different way of monitoring if they're, what's going on in the bag, and we just check the milk, right? So the the thing that's most likely to make these lymph nodes big is lymphosarcoma, the neoplastic disease that cows get. Um, so if you I hate to cut this before you guys palpate it, but I'm going to anyway. If you if you feel this gland, it's really hard. It's bigger when you compare it to the other glands. There's there's some kind of an abscess back here because when you pop that, when you just tap that, it's fluctuant like there's fluid in it, and there's two little holes. And I hope there wasn't a dog on this farm because if it was my dog, he'd have a shotgun shell in him. Um, but something popped that, something penetrated, I think, penetrated that gland, carried bacteria in and caused an abscess. But that, so that's a good example of that you can have multiple things going on because I don't think that has anything to do with what's going on in here. I think this, I think we're going to incise this and I think this is going to be a, um, a mammary gland that has pretty ugly looking mastitis and this is something different. So am I making any sense? If you got any questions, I have, I have one wife, three daughter-in-laws, a bunch of grandkids, so I'm used to being interrupted. Don't feel bad about it saying about interrupting me and asking questions. And so there's all kinds of stuff going on. This is, remember we, we, we looked, oh yeah, there. look at the pus in there. There's all kinds of stuff. Remember we looked, when you look at that one, that, that um, the secretory tissue is all uniform. It's soft if you touch it. It's um, almost a salmon color. And this, this thing is really, really hard when you cut it. There's a lot of fibrous connective tissue. Um, there's, there's, that's, there's pus in that little thing. So this cow's udder is pretty well shot. That's probably, probably why she went to the kill. 
This is an interesting udder too. Um, it's got all kinds of stuff going on. There's a, there are these dark, superficial, um, darkened areas, and I don't know what caused that. That's that's all skin. That doesn't have anything to do with what's going in the business part of the gland. And this is some kind of a uh, some kind of a lumpy, bumpy thing. It looks like there's some necrotic tissue in there, and I don't. Maybe maybe so. This is an example of the kind of kind of lesion. No matter what animal or where in the animal, that you can't always tell what's going on just by looking at looking at the structure grossly. But you, the, if this were an animal that you wanted to make the diagnose what's going on, you'd take a little piece of that, and fix it, and make a slide out of it. And then the pathologist would look at it, and they'd be able to tell more about it because they could see the cellular architecture, what's going on. Um, this teat, this this is a cool teat. Well, it's not a cool teat if it's your cow. This cow's teat feels like it's got a pencil in it. This this cow, this udders, this quarter's never going to open. You know, when we try to open open teats, we usually we're trying to get something that's damaged right at the teat end. Here, this thing is all the way up the teat. I'll dissect it out after a while. But um, there's these cows didn't end up at the slaughter plant because they were good cows. This cow's udder is a little bit meaty as well. There's also a whole bunch of little some kind of little uh, proliferative skin lesions. They're probably viral. They're probably not significant. Um, you guys have probably seen all kinds of teat lesions, everything from cows stepping on their teats with a degloving injury where they peel the skin down. Probably have seen blisters on cows' teats. The most common cause of blisters is, is a herpes mammalitis virus. One, um, one of these udders has a... So here's... This is part of the medial suspensory ligament. That's so. This is the sucker that holds that that gland on, and their their fingers of this suspensory ligament that go around into around the uh, udder and into the parenchyma to support it. And the same thing on the front. There's it, the the supportive connective tissue comes from a different structure, but it does the same thing. It it goes around and it also goes into the parenchyma. And it's pretty remarkable. These these babies are heavy. I had a heck of a time hauling them around.